Okay, I got everything set up. Um, is it okay if we just send our cases before, like both of us just send our cases before we read on the email chain? Okay. Just let me know when y'all's is sent. Oh, yeah, give me a second. I need to pull it up. Okay. Um, sorry, I kind of just like, my doc kind of just froze. Give me a couple of seconds. Um, it's fine. I'll pull it up. Give me a sec. Oh, wait. Um, so we read like direct evidence in case and we have the cards, but a couple of them are kind of scattered. Would you rather us put that on the doc that we send it in the email or um, just like if you want to see the evidence? Yeah, you can just send what you read first and then if we need cards, we'll call for them. All right, that's cool. I'll just send this then. All right, yeah. All right. All right. Um. Okay, I just sent it. Okay. Is everyone ready? It's gonna be a little fast, Chloe. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Um, I haven't gotten it yet. Can we make sure? Was it replied all? Oh wait, I just got it. Just kidding. You're honestly probably fine. I was just letting you know I'm tired. <laughs> okay, I'm we. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try not go fast. You're good. I did LD speech. with less sleep. <laughs> okay. All right. So everyone's good. Perfect. 
Clear and I negate in our first contention is COVID. Biden's COVID plan hinges upon expanded surveillance. As Cohen argued last week that Biden will ramp up surveillance to track where COVID is moving. The plan pledges an unspecified amount of money to dramatically increase surveillance. And forget blaming wet markets. The next pandemic is probably already among us. The game has now shifted to mitigating deaths rather than preventing pandemics. Nuki argues in 2020 that zoonotic spillover events are happening all the time but are seldom noticed. Working to find the origin of COVID is necessary but misses the main point. This discovery won't stop the next one unless something more fundamental changes. There are environmental changes that happen when uh, that, uh, changes that make it more likely that viral jumps will burn bright. In using signals intelligence, we can build a contact tracing that solves for future pandemics. As Bernard wrote this month that the use of SIGINT has become increasingly integral to epidemic and pandemic preparedness and response. The COVID-19 pandemic has occurred during a period of technological integration with individuals regularly trading personal data for access. However, the NSA is the primary provider of SIGINT in the U.S. As Bellamy writes in 2018 that the NSA focuses entirely on SIGINT. Bernard explains that with SIGINT, the NSA would work with telecom data to track co compliance with social distancing, implement geofencing to implement quarantine, and use cell phone data applications to provide to support quarantine and conduct enhanced contact tracing. This signals intelligence is empirically great with a good actor to prevent the global spread as Dibliani wrote in 2020 that the NSA gathered medical intelligence or medical signet and researched the impacts of its spread and impact of, on SARS. Better responses save lives as Prinkle argued last week that timing matters and data showed the, that efforts to delay the early spread of the virus may have saved an average of 30 deaths daily. Continue Attention to is terrorism. Data collection by the NSA is vital to counter terror efforts, as Leggett argues that the NSA helped thwart terrorists. Every study by oversight organization came to similar conclusions that from threats to, from cyber attacks, from cyber attacks, terrorists, nuclear weapons, and peer nations, the NSA saves lives. It underpins every other source of intelligence. As Congress recognized that when it reauthorized 702, ending domestic surveillance adds unnecessary times and delays to our, to our international surveillance of terrorism. McLaughlin concluded that we must reject any ideas that add time and process between the moment the NSA picks up a lead overseas and the time it can take to cross-check records and determine whether there is a domestic dimension to overseas plotting. That's problematic as ISIS is rebuilding and Lemon wrote in 2020 that COVID-19 has translated into regional opportunity. The Islamic State has sought to use COVID to spread its own more violent um, flavor of destruction and, and terror. The Islamic State group is strengthening both financially and militarily. It's now up to the U.S. to keep pressure on these fighters to stop them from enjoying resurgence. It's, if left without continuous pressure, ISIS can become irreversible. A rejuvenated ISIS will attack the West. As Gary wrote this week, that ISIS is also transformed into a covert network and their failure to recognize this danger and develop appropriate policies to combat it runs the risk of terrorist attacks in Europe and elsewhere. Contention three is litigation. When surveillance is curtailed in the U.S., litigation by intermediaries are sure to follow. Empirics prove the Harvard Law Review explained in 2018 that in the wake of Snowden disclosures, technology companies publicly demonstrated their commitment to privacy and civil liberties. Evidence for this uh, per, per Evidence for this perspective can be found in the volume of litigation pursued by major technology companies challenging the government re over requests for information in the years since the Snowden disclosures. Claude courtrooms doom entrepreneurs and innovation specifically in biotech, as in biotechnology transactions and patent rights strongly shape competition between radical innovation and production. An effective market requires that disputes are settled as quickly as possible, but uncertainty means slower diffusion of technology. And biotech is key to resolve antibiotic resistance, as Adam explains that small companies uh, are, in, are the innovation machine for biotech and antimicrobial resistance whereby bacteria are evolving to not be killed by other ba antibiotics could leave open the possibility that once easily treated infections can once again become deadly and should new antibiotics not be made. As a result, without sm small biotech innovation, the World Health Organization writes in 2019 that drug-resistant diseases could cause 10 million deaths each year by 2050. All right, everyone ready for F? We affirm contention one is human intelligence. The NSA has made the U.S. less secure against terrorism. Schneier 15 explains that false positives overwhelm the system and millions will be falsely accused for every terrorist plot the system finds, which takes time and cost. Because of these inefficiencies, he concludes that mass surveillance wasn't able to prevent the Boston bombing marathons, even though the bombers were on the watch list. Walt 14 explains that surveillance is popular with the government because it's easy. However, if we didn't have the NSA, we'd have to think more seriously about boots on the ground and force the U.S. to decide which threats are serious. Human intelligence will give us the best, best chance to preempt and thwart terrorist attacks. Johnson 09 finds that the central task of human intelligence is to steal secrets from adversaries to achieve a thorough understanding of threats only human agents can provide insights into, the intentions of adversaries who are armed and hostile. 
Because this key component cannot be replaced, Margolis 13 writes that the worst intelligence failures can be attributed to an absence of human intelligence. Human intelligence is still being neglected and without it will make the US susceptible to intelligence failures down the road. Grim 16 furthers that the attack on Brussels is the latest reminder that terrorists have turned to burner phones and encryption technology, which makes metadata collection useless. Over-reliance on technology for intelligence gathering has made the US complacent to terror calls that have been able to adapt. Utilizing human intelligence to prevent the next terror attack is crucial. Meyerfold 14 finds that modern technology can provide terrorist groups access to weapons to kill billions. Contention 2 is upholding the free world. The U.S. is caught in a 21st century crisis of legitimacy and influence. Nicholson 14 of Johns Hopkins explains that no single issue has caused greater damage to the trust between the U.S. and its allies than these sweeping revelations of the NSA surveillance programs. As such, it is no surprise that Boot 20 of the Washington Post explains that democratic erosion is now the norm across the world. Since 2009, the U.S. has fallen eight points on the freedom scale. NSA surveillance is to blame. Funnel 19 finds the internet is dividing and countries will be forced to make a decision about their futures, whether to choose the Western approach or the Chinese Communist Party. Prior to the Snowden revelations, Kel 14 finds that the American government had successfully built up a policy based on promoting an open internet. However, the internet government's conversation took a dramatic turn after the Snowden disclosures, as the NSA is galvanizing opposition to America's internet freedom agenda. Even developing countries who have traditionally aligned with the U.S. don't want U.S. assistance because they assume it comes with a back door for the NSA and are walking straight into the arms of Russia and China. Thus, Funnel furthers that 38 countries have now had their telecommunications infrastructure designed and constructed by Chinese technology firms. However, it is not too late to turn the tide of authoritarianism. As Antony 19 concludes, 50 nations are digital desires, countries that are yet to make up their mind about whether to an adopt whether to adopt an open internet mo- an open model of the internet or an authoritarian version. Affirming would regain our global image. As Professor Clement of U Toronto 13 writes that eliminating invasive NSA spying would earn more domestic support and gain credibility in the international forum, becoming an essential precondition for developing global cyberspace governance as a welcoming oasis. Ensuring countries choose internet freedom in the U.S.'s model for the world is crucial. As Dickinson 10 of Foreign Policy explains, internet freedom has been a critical tool for advancing democracy by enabling citizens to protest suspicious election results. A world filled with authoritarian nations would ensure chaos. As Rumble 94 of the University of Hawaii explains, the more power a government has, the more it can act arbitrarily according to the whims and desires of the elites. Totalitarian governments slaughter their people by the tens of millions, while many democracies can barely bring themselves to execute even serial murderers. Thus, we affirm. Can I see the Dickinson evidence? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Justin, do you have that? Yeah. Uh, Can I also see Johnson 09 on C1? Yeah, I can send that. Yeah. Uh, I'll get both or just send him one email. Oh, okay. That's fine. Oh, and can I also see, sorry, uh, Mirfold? It's the last card you read on C1. Yeah, of course.
They're all sent. I'll let you know. Okay, I just got it, so we can start cross. You can take the first question. How does human intelligence solve for terrorism? So human intelligence gives them the necessary ability where they can find the motivation and, and like incentives of these groups that surveillance can't find. What does that look like? So that looks like them infiltrating certain areas and like collecting intelligence that surveillance wouldn't necessarily be able to understand. For example, in, like um, digital surveillance only tracks things like where phone calls are coming from, um, like who's calling who, but human intelligence has the ability to track like what people are actually saying. Can I take a question? Yes. So let's talk about your first contention on COVID. What's the guarantee that surveillance will increase to the threshold where it's effective enough to prevent a pandemic? Because COVID occurred during a period of technological advancement. So insofar as our technology is increasing, then these systems are only better able to detect the pandemic before it starts. But let's go back to talking about human intelligence because the argument isn't making sense. How can a person detect the motive of a terrorist if it has no knowledge based off of surveillance of where they are, what they're planning on doing and where they're going. They're left to then just only be able to respond to something that happens when it happens, right? Yeah, so human intelligence doesn't necessarily encompass just physical people on the ground. It includes things like CIA and FBI wiretapping. That's uniquely better than NSA surveillance because NSA surveillance only tracks things like who's calling who, where calls are coming from, and like the actual location of these things rather than the content. But let's go back to your first contention on pandemics. Even okay. if technology is increasing, there has to be a certain threshold to where it's effective enough to actually prevent a pandemic. What's the guarantee that we will meet that bright line where we have effective technology that can actually prevent a pandemic? Yeah, so it's two parts. One, not only is our technology getting better now, but we tell you that good actors only make the response to pandemics better. Which means that insofar as not only do we have Biden who actually cares about pandemics compared to Trump who didn't, and it was the reason why we did nothing to prepare ourselves for the current one, because we have a good actor in office who cares about it and is already taking the precautions to be better prepared for the next one, and our surveillance is increasing, that's the reason why we're going to be past the bright line to be able to respond better to the next pandemic. Can I get a question? Sure. On, like, on democracy. If your argument is true, that NSA surveillance is a reason why our allies don't trust us, isn't that more of a reason why companies and corporations would go to the court to challenge surveillance in a world where it gets eliminated? I'm not sure what you mean. Like, the reason, <clears throat> if, your, if your argument is true about democracies, companies will try to save themselves and their face because they are benefiting from NSA surveillance by challenging it in courts. Why are right? they benefiting from NSA surveillance? Because why do companies benefit from NSA surveillance? Yeah. Because they get like information off of it, like tech companies. Wait, but your own evidence finds that many companies are like are completely denouncing this. So there's no benefit for them at all. In fact, it's even worse because less people are actually trusting these companies since they believe that their information is being stolen well, by tech Well, one, we're over like time, Google. but two, the All NSA right. would be eliminated in your world, which should mean that litigations would increase. All but right. we'll run some prep. That was 25 seconds. Um, it's just going to go down their case. Is anybody not ready? Okay. 
Let's start in their contention one about human intelligence. They tell you that false positives are really bad and information overload is causing the NSA to be really ineffective. But first of all, Cumulotech is always going to solve. Harris writes that the NSA's data collection situation isn't as bad as it seems. Yes, the agency has a lot of data, but the NSA began building a Cumulo because they were trying to do automated analysis for tracking terrorist suspects. It's operating at thousands of nodes. Go with the NSA data centers. Cumulo's ability to handle data means that the NSA can store data and add new analytic capabilities in hours. Cumulo is especially adept at analyzing trillions of data points, years worth of information, let analysts move from query to query very fast. Easy to see where this type of analysis would be valuable in a term how far a suspected, a suspected terrorist network might spread. That's really important because that actually goes onto the on, like onto why like it's actually specifically really good for terrorism. But then I would say that that means that there's like already solvency in place for like solving for information overload. Obviously, the NSA has a lot of data; they have checks back for it. But then. Let's go to human intelligence for like specifically. Human intelligence is always going to fail for other reasons. O'Brien writes that it's easier to recognize human deficiencies and to fix them. There is no quick fix. Time and patience will be necessary to train analysts. Unfortunately, time and patience necessary is not a luxury. Now threats emerge quickly. Islamic terrorist groups are highly insulated from the outside intrusion. Intelligence penetration is extremely difficult. Accessing the inner circles may take years to materialize or maybe even impossible. That's really important because that supercharges our link because we tell you the ISIS is rebuilding right now. We don't have the time that it takes for human intelligence to actually see results, which means you're always going to prefer some form of uh, some, some, some form or surveillance that the NSA is really, really good at. But then, I would say that surveillance technology is actually a prerequisite to good human intelligence. Santa writes that as we continue to advance in tech, the potential threats posed by advancements will make both protecting and exploiting secrets potentially more difficult. Traditional approaches to espionage will have to be further augmented. The next generation of operatives and their managers will need to be more adept at technological aug augmentation. That's really important because basically what we're saying is that there is no good human intelligence if you don't first have surveillance that tells them what, what to do in the first place, which means that even in the world where you buy the human intelligence is good, our case is always going to prerequisite. Surveillance makes it that much better. Remember, on time frame, you're always going to want surveillance because it will act a lot quicker they actually get like people like having boots on the ground but then let's go to their c2 they told that, that um, like the democratic erosion model is like, happening now. But first of all, domestic in, in, in surveillance is not key. The plan cannot stop United States surveillance on other countries because the, the resolution is literally just getting rid of NSA domestic surveillance. That's what's actually vital to credibility. Macaulay writes that the international community reacted with alarm. Revelations of the NSA has been tapping into internet communications of foreign individuals and governments has spurred world leaders to announce a global superpower as a hypocrite. The dramatic international backlash is a clear indication of the severity. Um, the EU has complained to the US Attorney General. That is all a reaction specifically based on us spying on our foreign adversaries. That's where they don't solve for, and that's where our evidence isolates is actually the problem. So even if you buy the democracy is eroding, it is not solved by the, the, the affirmative. But then I would say it doesn't really matter because countries aren't going to model United States policy. It's a big myth. More strict rights that delusional America believes that despite all evidence to the contrary, America remains a model for the world, one whose mission is to spread the world. Foreigners take an entirely different view. Americans are living the dream where not only do others share the American self regard, but they no longer aspire to emulate the country's achievements. Countries have dozens of models to choose from. That's really important because they talk about the fact. That 38 countries have um ha have like uh, have infrastructure designed by China. Yeah, I would say because there's a bunch of other countries that have equal amount of, of, of sway in the national community. China is a massive superpower. Obviously, you're gonna listen to them. Well, there's no specific reason why the United States specifically is the one country that everybody looks to. It's like a really like American-centric view. It's just not realistic. But then turn our case prerequisites our case is pandemics only emboldened authoritarian governments. Lamont 25 says the COVID pandemic is accelerating efforts among authoritarian governments as regimes tighten their grip at home while seizing the opportunity to advance our agenda abroad. There are clear trends of how authoritarian states have responded to COVID that will last far beyond the pandemic. Authoritarian regimes have made the argument to their, to their people that their model of government is stronger and better, su better suited to tackle large-scale challenges, which means that any risk that we can mitigate pandemics faster means we prevent authoritarian regimes from submitting their power during disease outbreaks. I would prefer this solvency of authoritarianism a lot better than their nebulous, we increase democracy impact. It's not an actual like solvency. We have no idea what a, like increased United States credibility looks like, especially when we don't even know if they're going to solve. I'd say that the much clearer solvency, if you're going to look to authoritarianism, is through the path of the, path of the negative. It's a really clear neck ballot. I'm gonna front line my case and it'll be done theirs. Right. Um, is anybody not ready? All right, sounds good. And I'll do weighing at the end if I have time. On our C1, they say the NSA is getting better because they have a lot of formulas to store data. Number one, we'd say that they have to follow up on the potential potential terrorist threats. Their evidence is talking about data overall, but our evidence of Schneier finds that every single time they get a positive for a potential terrorist threat, they have to send units to go investigate that threat. That, that's the one thing that takes time, not the actual collection of data. Their second response is that humans are inefficient because they're not a luxury and takes a long time to happen. Number one, we'd say that because there's so many false positives right now, the terrorist threat's going to happen from ISIS because you can't identify it, which is why number two, it's still better to have human intelligence because it outweighs in the long term because humans can 
can obviously solve threats down the road. They're only talking about one potential threat. We solve infinite threats in the long term. Their third response to the next generation needs more technology, and there's no good human intelligence or surveillance. Number one, we'd say that the CIA and FBI all have wiretapping systems. We don't need NSA surveillance. And number two, these units can also partner with other countries, such as uh, other countries like in Europe and Asia, to do the surveillance overall, which means you don't need NSA surveillance. Their second mention is about, I mean, our second mention is about upholding the free rule. Number one, they say that it's not in other countries, and our evidence is talking about foreign ones. Yeah, we're talking about foreign countries modeling after us, but our evidence that they can see from Nicholson finds that because of the Snowden revelations, that's what turned other countries to turn their backs against us because they believe that we are violating our citizens' rights. That also responds to their second argument because they can see that since 2013, other countries followed the U.S., but after the Snowden revelation, they didn't, which responds to their modeling argument. Their third argument is there's no reason as to why they're going to sway to the U.S. specifically. Obviously, every single country wants to, to follow the global leader, and the global leader is the U.S., which is why they're going to want to sway to the U.S. if we don't violate our citizens' rights. The NSA pandemic is pre authoritarianism, but they're only talking about current authoritarian regimes strengthening. We're saying that new authoritarian teams pop up, which outweighs their argument in scope and magnitude. Their last response, we have no idea how much an increase of credibility looks like. They've conceded the Nicholson evidence from the top of our case finding. No greater single issue has destroyed American credibility in democracy than NSA surveillance. Go to their case. On COVID, five responses. Number one, Lenise 20 explains, is that contact tracing like they're talking about quarantine is only effective if red states agree to do it. But the problem is a lot of red states in COVID and previous pandemics refuse to do all these programs, which means even if you have NSA surveillance and you ramp it up, nobody's going to follow it. Number two, what Dyson 2020 finds is that a private sector is always solving back for the impact because Harvard and MIT have already developed a system that can contact trace and prevent pandemics in the first place, which outweighs their argument specificity because they're doing targeted surveillance, whereas the NSA is only picking up random pandemic data on the side. The third response comes from Sabin in 2020 that finds that the government is already looking into private companies and phone uh, phone data from other companies, which is why you don't have to use NSA surveillance as the government's already doing it from phone data from other companies as well. And for number four, what King in 2020 finds is that since COVID-19, the CDC has ramped up the surveillance as well to try to solve back for potential pandemics, meaning that the CDC and other government agencies also solve back. And finally, you can turn the argument because Fox in 2020 finds is that the surveillance undermines public trust in the government, which is why people don't want to do what the government tells them to do, which is why the government mandates more quarantines and contact tracing. You're probably not going to do it, which turns their argument. Go to the C2 on terror. Number one, all their evidence is talking about international surveillance stopping terror, but the resolution is talking about ending domestic surveillance, which means they don't have a link. And number two, what Houston 2020 finds is that our, uh, we win our C1, we win their case, because human intelligence is 71% more effective than the 20% effectiveness rate of NSA surveillance. And number two, what Lumen in 2020 finds is that even if we don't have NSA surveillance, Europe has unrestricted surveillance that can also fill in for the NSA to monitor threats in the West. And finally, what Friend in 2030 finds, uh, 2020 finds is that there was a period of time in 20 2015, where we ended surveillance altogether, but it never increased terrorism because terrorists know what surveillance is doing and they still choose to carry out attacks. Number, go to their third condition of litigation. Number one, their evidence is horrible. It's talking about tech companies like AI and other firms, not about biotech firms, which is their link. Number two, their evidence from Colossal is also bad because it just says that biotech can't as effectively carry out their medicine. It doesn't mean you stop all biotech together. Number three, we'd say that biotech is already being developed by other countries as well. Even if the US stops, it doesn't mean that 20, 10 million people die all across the world since other countries like China and Russia are ramping it up. And number four, what Fleming in 2020 finds is the return on investment into innovation in biotech is already going to be negative by 2020, meaning the innovation in the status quo is not good. It's on a downward trend and you don't see what any of the lies are talking about. I see the turn you put on C1 and everything you put on C3. Um, yeah. There's only one piece of evidence on C3, so I'll send that. Okay. Can I also see uh Human intel solves threats. CIA and FBI have wiretapping, and foreign countries model after the US.
Um, the human intelligence evidence is Johnson, but we read another one that also says the same thing, so I'll send that as well. Okay, I sent everything except Fleming, and Arjun's going to send Fleming in a sec. All right, I'm setting it right now. Give me a second. All right. All right, are you for cross? Yeah, for sure. Can I get the first question? No problem. Okay, let's talk about your C2. What does Macaulay from Rebuttal say that people really care about when it comes to United States surveillance? Um, what do you mean? Um, our yeah, Macaulay, sure you tell me. yeah, our Macaulay evidence tells you that what actually like pissed off the international community had nothing to do with like us like surveilling our citizens and had everything to do with like the work that we're doing on like foreign entities, which you don't solve for. So why do we see that mm -hmm. de democrat like democracy is eroding specifically because of this one aspect of NSA domestic surveillance? So the reason why is twofold. Number one, we're pissing off our allies, like you're talking about places like Europe that already do have like developed internet infrastructure. We're talking about developing countries that are choosing a model of the internet, which is what our Fennel and our Kel evidence finding that before 2013, these developing countries were siding with the US and after it, now they're siding with China. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, go for it. Um, okay, I really wanna talk about your third contention really quickly. Yeah. The first piece of evidence you read at the top of your case talks about technology companies pursuing litigation. Where in that entire evidence talks about biotech or pharmaceutical companies at all? What? So your link in your argument is that biotech companies are gonna be doomed because the courts are gonna be clogged. So yeah. my, my, my question to you is, where in your link evidence about NSA surveillance leading to litigation or ending it leading to litigation says anything about biotech companies or pharmaceutical companies? Right. The, the link isn't necessarily that it's like biotech companies specifically doing the suing. It's technology companies in general who are relying on NSA surveillance, which just mm -hmm. clogs the courts overall. It's not that the biotech companies have to be doing the litigation for our impact to trigger. Okay, wait, wait. So your argument is that companies in general companies that were like were, yeah the, the argument is the argument is literally just like companies that were like using nsa surveillance and like when the nsa gets rid of like it, this, this like happened on a, on a smaller scale with snowden right it's like when companies like were like called out for the fact that they were relying on nsa they were like oh wow this is like actually really bad we're gonna sue the nsa to save face and like these Wait. are companies that aren't just biotech and so that what that does is clog the court to the point where it like like basically just like like Wait, stops so, so like really innovation quickly. Really quickly on that, yeah. th that note, though, your evidence talking about like biotech from Galasso just says an effective market is necessary to get biotech on. It doesn't right. talk about clogging courts or litigation at all. No, it's talking about transaction and patient and patent rights. That's all types of like litigation. Like that, I'm pretty I'm, sure there's like different types of courts to sort different types of disputes. Like okay, well that argument was just like not made in patents. rebuttal. And like, if you want to make that argument in summary, then like Sydney will answer it. I mean, but like, so, okay, no, can I have a question? Yeah. yeah no Explain problem. to me how specifically like the United States getting rid of NSA domestic surveillance causes new authoritarian regimes to crop up because that seems like a really big yep. reach. 
Um, so the reason why is simple. Whenever other countries start choosing other countries as model the internet, for example, China and Russia, that's what gives them the influence to model their internet and their countries after those countries as well, which is why there's the beginning of authoritarianism. And your but assertion that the United like, States is just like the best, that's just an assertion, right? Like no other uh, like major no. superpower matters. Our Dickinson evidence finds that the U.S. is good because since we promote internet freedom, that's what's able to allow for better I'm not arguing that the United States isn't good. I'm saying that there are other countries with equal influence that are bad, but that's cross. Uh, okay. We're going to run prep. Okay, that's right. The order is going to be starting off on our case and then going on to theirs. Okay. Start off on COVID. They give you five responses. The first is that contact tracing is only it only happens if red states do it. But we tell you that Trump's rhetoric is the reason why red states won't do contact tracing now. But Biden saw specifically because he cares about the pandemic, which is why our uniqueness is the reason why the NSA is going to be more effective insofar as Biden's president. But then group their next three responses because they're all just about alternatives to surveillance. But it doesn't matter if other people can do surveillance because they dropped the link that SIGINT is specific to the NSA and it's specific to solvency because SIGINT is the what is implement is, is is the like precautions that are actually taken in order to to implement the uh to um to curb the pandemic which is geofencing contact tracing it's just like general pandemic preparedness that's where nard which goes clean drop but then their fifth uh, response is that pen, uh, that that public uh public trust decreases during like when surveillance happens but one this is not unique because surveillance exists in both worlds but two insofar as even if this was true that surveillance caused public trust to decrease it doesn't matter after 300,000 people have died from covid that's enough reason why you're going to want to comply with regulations that the government keeps in place for you to simply stay alive which is why you can clearly extend our argument we tell you that biden's plan hinge upon 
contract does is really important because insofar as the next pandemic is among us, we need to be focused on making structural change to our pandemic response. And that change is through SIGA and the use of signals intelligence specifically, which is why without the NSA, you don't have signals intelligence and you're not going to be able to solve for the, for the 30 deaths that could be saved per day if you go for COVID. Then let's go on to the second contention about terrorism. We can kick out of it. They're getting no offense about this. Like, just concede the link that, that our stuff isn't about domestic terrorism, which is why the NSA can't solve for it. On litigation, all the only response that they say is that pharma is decreasing the status quo, and that's not about biotech. But our argument has absolutely nothing to do about pharma. We tell you that any status quo, insofar as courts are going to get clause because more companies are going to justify suing the NSA because the fact that it gets abolished is the reason why small biotech firms are not going to be able to get rights to patents fast. And that's problematic because the fact that they get right to patents the better technology that they can create in order to start solving for antibiotic resistant diseases that can kill 10 million people per, per year. This is the biggest impact in the ground insofar as it's quantified and it's literally 10 million people dying internationally, not just in the U.S. They co concede the link that the NSA domestic surveillance is contingent. You can clearly extend that. We can win there if you're a lazy judge and don't want to vote off of anything else. Let's go into their case. At the top about human intelligence, the biggest mistake for them is that they call concede the prereq that that human intelligence uh, depends on surveillance technologies. And because insofar as technologies are in are advancing in the status quo, there's no way that human intel can keep up. It doesn't know how, or human intel cannot keep up if technology is increasing, which is why. Or, but then specifically on their link, their link card only says that the absence of human intelligence is the reason why surveillance is bad. But their card doesn't say that there's a trade off between surveillance and human intelligence, which means that they can't even solve that if you get rid of NSA domestic surveillance insofar surveillance still exists there's no proof that human intelligence is going to increase which is why they don't solve for their own link but then on c2 their evidence is extremely awful and so far and none of their evidence says that, that, that the removing the nsa is going to mean that our allies trust us the reason why our allies don't trust us is because trump literally decked democracy which is why other countries don't even believe that the u.s is a representation of democracy but remember there are other major powers they're all, all their responses are american centric views and so far as china is a major regime and they're literally controlling what other countries do that's the reason why it doesn't matter what the u.s does the u.s will never solve Cool. Uh, I'm gonna call Arvin, and we're gonna take breath. And I'll give y'all a thumbs up when the call is here. All right, Arjun, can you call me? I don't think my phone's working.
All right, that was 2.30 of prep. Um, the order is just going to be our case and then their case. Is anybody not ready? All right. The argument you're voting for us on is human intelligence. It's very simple. Currently, the NSA is largely ineffective at solving terrorist plots because of data overloads that create false positives and take away time and money from proper investigations. However, by eliminating digital surveillance, the government is forced to use human intelligence, which is more effective at preventing threats because only humans can provide insights on hostile adversaries. Stopping terrorism is vital as modern technology can give them the capabilities to kill billions of people. They make two responses. First, they say that we conceded a prerequisite that they depend on NSA surveillance. That's not true at all because they have conceded our front line saying that the FBI and CIA have things like wiretapping, which gives them the ability to conduct surveillance, which is more effective. But secondly, they say that we don't have an actual like warrant as to why there's a trade-off. Yes, we do. In our case, our Walt evidence finds that whenever we eliminate NSA surveillance, the government's going to shift to things like boots on the ground instead. The weighing is pretty simple too, because terror is obviously going to outweigh on scope. We're killing billions. They're only impacting out to millions too. Um, but secondly, even if um, we don't like have the same surveillance, we're also partnering with other agencies as well. It's not just wiretapping; it's, uh, it's not just wiretapping. So we're also able to like partner with foreign agencies for surveillance. So we'll have like a full effect there. Let's go to their case because they concede a couple pieces of terminal defense to end the round. First, they say that Trump's rhetoric is the reason as to like why they're solving. One, there's no warrant just because Biden is president doesn't necessarily mean that the red states are going to change for um, to blue states. But secondly, the values that Trump instilled on these red states is still happening right now. That's the exact same reason why you still see millions of people like completely denying COVID is existing. Then they try to group our next three arguments saying that it doesn't matter because Signet is specifically stopping COVID. Even if their Signet argument is, is true, it doesn't mean that we're wrong. Insofar is that's true. Our evidence is very clear, explicitly saying that Harvard, MIT, and the CDC are all providing their own methods for digital surveillance in order to combat the pandemic, meaning that it's basically going to um, non-unique their entire case. Then they say that, um, oh yeah, and then you can, like, I can also extend the Lance evidence that finds that contact tracing is only effective whenever these red states are actually going to be compliant to it, meaning that in their world, it's not going to happen. Then they also try extending their contention three as well, but there's a couple of responses that they miss. First of all, our uh, Fleming evidence finds that the ROI for um, M uh, AMRs is actually decreasing right now, meaning that no companies are actually investing in it. Secondly, other countries like Russia and China are investing in um, um, antibiotic like desist, uh, resistance, um, dis uh, antibiotic resistance on um, like materials so they can solve for it as well. But finally, the part that's really losing them the round is that their evidence is literally not making a distinction between um, between like the actual tech companies versus the like antibiotic resistant things, right? There's no reason as to why patent cases are happening in the exact same place as litigation cases. That's like saying a trial lawyer is gonna do like a corporate attorney case. Um, but even then, if the ROI is decreasing right now, that means that there's literally zero investment in these things. So it's not gonna be happening. They try to outweigh saying that it's gonna be affecting the entire world. They don't provide like a timeline as to when that's gonna happen. You're gonna prefer terrorism because we have the cleanest impact extended. Billions is obviously gonna outweigh any of the millions that they claim. It's a clear F ballot. Okay, are you ready for cross? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On human intelligence, at the beginning of the round, the way that you're shaping this argument is that if you eliminate NSA surveillance, they're going to have human intelligence in the form of not boots on the ground, but like other things like wiretapping. But then the way that you extend it is now it's if you eliminate NSA surveillance, you're going to have boots on the ground. So then my question is, again, what I asked in first cross. How does boots on the ground solve for terrorist attacks when you have surveillance that can tell you when it happens before it happens? So boots um, on the ground doesn't <clears throat> only mean we're going to have police force and military personnel on the ground. It means we're going to use more human intelligence purposes like the FBI and the CIA that are going to, one, like physically be there, but secondly, also use wiretapping and other forms of surveillance. The problem is, though, that your link is that the elimination of digital surveillance means that you would move to human intelligence. Yeah. But you concede that surveillance still exists. So what changes? Wait, wait, what? No, so no. You can our, see our, our, our link is that if we don't have NSA surveillance, then we change to human intelligence. Right. No, but your link specifically, what the card says, is not at all about the NSA. It's about digital intelligence, digital surveillance in general, which means that if we um, both agree that surveillance exists in both worlds, you're never going to see this trade off. So, no, like, that's, that's not your true. own evidence. Okay, sure. So, here's the implication there. If that means. Wait, 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 w
So it says the NSA. Sure, and also says we have to think more seriously of boots on the ground is not where they're going to put boots on the ground. <clears throat> and your Mar- Margolis um, evidence just says that the absence of human intelligence is bad and the U.S. needs to consider human intelligence. It says nothing about the NSA. And that's what you're trying to do your extra warranting wait, that if you eliminate NSA no, surveillance, you're going to have so a that, feeling that's of our, human That's our intelligence. Walt evidence. Okay. Your evidence that you sent when we called for it is what you have in the email um, chain. I'm reading what the, is in the, the evidence chain. you sent is that the evidence you called for is human intelligence being good at deterring threats. You never called for the trade off evidence. The trade off evidence is the Walt evidence. Okay, you can send that too. But it's in there. Walt is super vague. It literally just says we'd have to think about it. That is not yeah, an it's actual not like it's not taken. a trade off. Y'all are painting it to be wait, 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 so wait, much wait. better than the card is. So, okay, wait, wait. So, so, so number one, the trade off argument was conceded out of rebuttal. It's way too late to make new the new responses. The trade off argument is not conceded out and, of rebuttal. And number, and number two, and Walt says that we have to do more things like boots on the ground. And the extra warranty we give along with side Walt is that we don't have any more NSA surveillance. That's when we have to increase the amount of performance to That's make up fine. for that surveillance. That's fine. But insofar as a pre is dropped that you cannot have effective human intelligence without good surveillance and the only it, weighing that was done is our impacts are way clear you're never going to be winning there you it, can it's, it's not conceded there, there are two front lines that you also conceded and we did weighing about why it's not clear that's pretty much cross the weighing was your impact is clear that's not weighing okay uh, it's going to start on the neg and then go to the af is anybody not ready you can sign your ballot super clearly on the negative on COVID. They extend two responses versus the fact that like, did, like nobody's going to listen to uh, contact tracing. The second of all is that other like uh, um, surveillance mechanism solves like private sector or CDC. First on like the, no, the, the idea that nobody listens. Remember the fact that Trump rhetoric was a massive cause, which means at best, this is like a mitigation impact and we have some risk that things get better in the world where we now have Biden as the president. At that point, you look to what's actually being able to stop COVID or in like in future pandemics, which is sick. That leads me to my second thing, which is that they just say the other intelligence exists. What they miss about the warranting is that it's not just intelligence gathering that solves it's the actual enforcement mechanism that is clear that is um directly tied to SIGINT. that is why we're going to win because they haven't said the word SIGINT in a single speech in this round SIGINT is what's crucial to actually implementing um a contact tracing which solves for covid it's not just collecting data it's what you do with it only SIGINT can do that we said the nsa is a specific provider for SIGINT. if you get rid of the nsa we can no longer do that that's where we get the solvency for not only um like the things like covid but every pandemic in the future which is why it's super urgent that you vote on this now because pandemics are only going to continue increasing in the status quo that's Really important. Also, they try to say the public trust decreases. It's really not unique. 400 people, 400,000 people have died. But then let's go to see through litigation. This is really important. The only actual piece of evidence that they read is the idea that pharma investment is decreasing. They do a bunch of extra analysis saying that like ROI for biotech is decreasing. They don't give a single piece of evidence for that. Oh, it's really important. Their Fleming evidence is literally just that pharma evidence is decreasing. At that point, you can see that when surveillance decreases, any kind of litigation will increase because companies want to save face. That clogs the courts and makes it so that a decrease in biotech invention, invention happen. If anything, you can vote off the 10 million people that will die because of ABR and on probability because it's already happened on a smaller scale with Snowden. Let's go to human intelligence. This is a super, super easy way to not vote for them because they drop the prereq in every and basically every speech that says the human intelligence depends on surveillance all or that means our case prereqs but then remember the fact that human intelligence takes too long which is why surveillance prereqs because we get information beforehand that makes surveillance actually that makes human intelligence actually effective but then remember the fact that your evidence doesn't even indicate a trade-off the only walt evidence is super vague it's not even an action about what actually happens it's just like we may have to think about boots on the ground which means that you have a very nebulous idea of what happens in the world of the affirmative if you decide to vote app also they just say ter- terror kills billions it's a super lazy impact they don't even tell you who they're Im- impacting out to or what terrorist group. Vote on us and like clarity of impact, if anything. We have 30 seconds. I'm going to take it now. Okay. Start on human intelligence, COVID, and then their argument. I mean, just either. Is anyone not ready? 
Human intelligence is very clean. They make three responses. Number one, they say we concede their prereq about needing NSA surveillance. No, we don't. There's two conceded front lines in every single speech. We say the CIA and FBI all have systems like wiretapping that can provide intelligence. And number two, they can partner with other agencies, for example, in Europe, to provide that same exact intelligence. We don't need NSA surveillance. Their second response is it takes too long. Number one, this was not in summary. And number two, they still concede all of our front lines saying the false positive mean that the attacks happen anyways. And we outweigh the long term because we can prevent every single terrorist threat overall. Their third response is completely new and final focus saying, the Walt evidence is vague. The Walt evidence is not vague. It is saying that we have to seriously consider using human intelligence, which is why our warranty that we made since the beginning, that's all been conceded saying, if we don't have any surveillance, the U.S. would have to increase informants to make up for that surveillance. Insofar as that's true, human intelligence is clean. Our Schneier evidence finds that there's hundreds of thousands of false positives every single year that clog the NSA so they can't do effective counter-terror measures. However, our Walt evidence finds without NSA surveillance, we'd have to turn those things like boots on the ground to make up and for that thing and increase informants like CIA agents, which is why our Johnson and Margulis evidence finds human intelligence is very good at deterring threats because they're able to look into the intention of hostile adversaries and stop them from becoming threats in the first place, which are impact finds that because terrorist groups get access to advanced modern weapons like chemical biological weapons, they can kill billions of people. Their last response is that we don't know which terrorist group we're talking about. Well, their own evidence is talking about ISIS. We can literally name like other terrorist groups. Go to their case. Oh, it also, it's also the biggest impact because it always every single other impact on scope. On COVID, they can see a lot of things. Number one, they can see the DICE evidence finding that private entities like Harvard and MIT are already doing early detection and pandemic prevention programs, which means we do not need signal intelligence. Even if signal intelligence exists, because the private sector is solving back for this anyways, it doesn't matter if one specific instance of the NSA is good. If other private instances solve for the pandemic in the first place, COVID, I mean, Harvard and MIT is not mitigation. It is literally prevention. On the C3, they really miss Fleming. Biotech companies are pharmaceutical companies, which is why if the ROI is negative and no investments coming, it does not matter if litigation happens if you don't have the capability to do any investment in the first place. They've also conceded defense saying other countries are doubling biotech like Russia and China, meaning the U.S. does not matter.